the weather is proper changing. It may look sunny and lovely at the minute, but trust me, it has been super chilly and we've had mental rain and mental wind. I've got a cycle home in that. And even yesterday, I saw a post on Instagram saying that the snow has started up in the Cairngorms. So it's only a matter of time now. And even here, last night, it was 5C in our garden. So it's time to accept that summer's over in the garden and the greenhouse. And I'm going to start getting things changed up for the autumn and winter seeds that I sowed a few weeks ago. It's been seriously busy getting all of this done. It's taken us all of the week. We didn't even get it all done in one day. But finally, I can tell you what's going on now. Okay, so the thing is, this is not sad. This is not a bad thing. I'm actually not feeling particularly bad about this. It's just, there is no longer the heat and the daylight and the length of time needed to get everything to ripen that is in here. And there are new flowers appearing and things and they're just not going to turn into tomatoes. So instead, what I'm going to do is chop all the tomatoes off, take them indoors. I'll make use of all the green tomatoes. Anything that's ripening, I will just ripen in the house. And that then frees up loads of space in here for all my autumn and winter grown. And if you guys saw my last video with my tips, I have got heaps going on over winter. I, I did last year and it was such a success. I'm going to do it again this year. So the first thing I need to do then is get rid of the tomato plants, the pepper plants and the aubergine plants. Tomatoes, yeah, lots of green stuff. I'll use them. The peppers will get used. There are ripe peppers. There are some unripe peppers. Not an issue. We'll all get used. The aubergines, there are, I think, maybe three usable aubergines on there. The rest are a bit small. But that means I got five aubergines this year in my very first year of growing. I'm actually really pleased with that. This little tiny one's a bit hard. The rest all feel like they might actually be ripe. So, you know, that's okay, isn't it? And I've had three so far, one of which was a double. You know, when you get the flowers at kind of joined together so it was a double aubergine so I've actually had a not bad crop considering it's my first year absolute least favourite job so I have to give all of this a good clean and it needs a good clean because I've had the right pain this year with white fly and aphids in the greenhouse ah, need to get all that scrubbed off just in case and then the issues we had with the organic feed I used in the quad grows fermenting so I need to make sure I get rid of all just all traces of that as well I hate this job <sighs> very empty and echoey greenhouse. Um, won't be for long though, because all of this is all the seeds I sowed in the previous video. Um, and they're all coming on gloriously, so these will fill this place up very quickly. So I'm going to go and get all the quad grows washed, and then I'll give in here a bit of a clean, and I'll get this set of staging set up so that I've then got my two benches for working on. Oh, it's just going to be boring dirty, icky work today. Real gardening. And every so often I do this because I didn't get my compost hot enough and I keep finding tomato seedlings in my compost. Jessie and I, Jessie from Plot37 and I have been having a good giggle about this. There's just bleeding hundreds of them. Right. Sucky job. You said you never see this stuff on Instagram, do you? and find my wife with the camera. <sighs> We've just emptied the greenhouse, so everything needs a really good clean. Problems with the fertiliser this year. 
because it fermented. Um, and problems with aphids and white flies, so everything's getting scrubbed, including the greenhouse. Okay. And you, uh, before you come in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bad this time. Am I covered and stuff? No, not this year. <laughs> I win this nail. For any newer folk, kind of who've not quite been here a full year yet, this is one of my happy places. Nothing makes me happier than when the greenhouse is all tidy and organised and I've got a real thing about when this floor is clean. Can't explain it, it's just me. It's probably the most famous thing on our channel is my greenhouse staging. So this is the same staging as on that side and what you can see is mine's actually folds flat and that gives me the option to rearrange my greenhouse and set it up to suit what I'm doing. So I had this flat and I had all the tomatoes on top of it to give me height. Now I'm going to put it up to full size and it'll give me a bench that I can have seedlings on and be growing stuff on during winter. With it being wooden, I can't kind of scrub it down all the time the way I do other things, but I can at least give it a good brush and make sure there are no snails and things on there. So that's one bit. And this bit's the main kind of structure. going to let you guys into a secret. For years we would carry this into the greenhouse flat and then put it up in the greenhouse, which works fine. It's a wee bit awkward, but it works. I only discovered this year that actually you can set it up out here much easier and carry it into the greenhouse because it fits through the door. So that's the main bit. <laughs> This is the shelf at the bottom, but this provides the stability. That's the bit that caused hilarity every year when I set this up in the greenhouse. Trying to get that into it when it's in the greenhouse. Much easier this way. Two benches to work on now. Well, three. But yeah. Right. I'll finish getting myself sorted and I'll see you guys in a bit. Actually, because I know you guys are probably going, what's with the basil? This supermarket basil. If you guys haven't seen it, one of my very early videos, I taught you how to take these apart and get loads of plants out of them so that they just stay alive for ages. That's what I'm doing because I sowed basil seed in this pot and it came up brilliant. I had lots of little seedlings and that snail ate them, all of them, overnight. So I was like, I'll just buy a plant from the supermarket. It's easier. Oh. So here we are then, a very different greenhouse from the last time you guys were in here with me. Tomatoes, peppers and aubergines have been cut down and the last of those harvests were taken indoors and in fact right at this minute Kate's making baba ganoush with all those aubergines. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Um, and the peppers, uh, we've still got heaps of them in fact harvesting more today. So this harvest, if I put my coffee down, this is from the outdoor tomato plants. So we've got 
a decent handful of brads there. We've had about three or four other brads. The rest, even though both plants were absolutely covered in tomatoes, the rest just, there's no way they will ripen now. It's one of those things you have to accept. Um, you just do green tomato things with them. Um, and there's some other little lata and rock caption and what have you, and courgettes and things. Um, yeah, so that's the, the last harvest of all of the tomatoes. But we're going to do some fajitas tonight for dinner, so I'll use up the peppers and onions and tomatoes and it'll be fabulous. But anyways, as you can see, the greenhouse is looking quite different because we are now in the kind of if you like, this is how the greenhouse is set up over winter. So I've said this before, um, for anyone who's not familiar with it, I deliberately have this type of wooden staging that folds flat because it's a really small greenhouse. It's only eight foot by six foot and I've got to make the best of the space I've got. And that means I move things around and adjust heights and things to suit what I'm growing. So all through winter, um, you can see all of these seedlings I sowed all of these seeds about two weeks ago now, or maybe two and a half weeks ago. Um, and I did them while I was thinking through the video about giving you guys the hints of how I'm going to grow over winter. So what I've got then in terms of growing in here, up on the shelf, I've got some flowers. So I have got two types of foxglove. I've got the foxglove seeds that I bought because you guys know I love my white foxgloves but I've also got seeds that I collected. Um, so I collected them a few weeks ago after the flowers were passed and that's them sown there. So I'm going to bring them on over winter so they'll be awesome flowers for next year. Um, I did try sowing some this year. I said way back as a bit of an experiment. Didn't come to anything. I've got lots of leaves and no flowers. I know for a fact doing it this way where I sow them now and bring them on over winter gives me awesome plants next year, lots of flowers, so that's a positive. Um, I've also got some cornflowers and things growing as well. On this side, I have got my mustards I spoke about in the winter growing video. So I've got green wave mustard, I've got dragon's tongues mustard. Those two we grew last year as well and they were a roaring success for us and we love them. Um, we use them really small in salads, but once they get a bit bigger, we put them into kind of like stir fries and all that kind of thing. We generally cook with them. They just get treated like green that you can cook down. I've also got my broccoli rab or it's broccoletto quarantino riccio, um, which is a 45 day broccoli rab apparently. It's never grown that quickly for me. But I absolutely love it. We put it in pastas and pizzas and things. Um, broccoli, if you don't know broccoli rab, okay, it's like little tiny florets, a bit like sprouting broccoli, but a much, much smaller plant. And it's quite bitter, which is why you'll see it used a lot in pastas. Um, so it's great for cutting through those creamy, fatty sauces. It's just fantastic. So I do love that. And again, success with those last year. The mustard and the broccoli rab both grew happily in my raised beds, even in the worst weather last winter. So they're definites for me. Um, I've also got this year's choice of winter lettuce, which is this one here, and it's called Marvel. It's my first time trying this one, but it's come highly recommended. And I think Jessie at Plot 37 has grown that one too. And she also grows the same mustards because she recommended them to me. Um, and obviously I've got my pak choy. So I've got three types of pak choy going this year. My red pak choy that you guys all loved last year and it looks awesome. I've got green pak choy, which you have seen me harvesting recently. And in fact, we had it steamed with some cod last night and it was fabulous. And I've got a new one this year called tat soy. It's a new one on us. So we'll see how that goes this year. Um, and what else have I got? Is that me? I've also got some more land cress and some more lamb's lettuce going. They should, they're quite hardy, so they should do well both in here and in the garden. And lastly, Random one I didn't mention in the video, but I just decided on a whim. I've got some rainbow chard going. Now, I'm saying rainbow chard. Basically, it's a pack that's got multi seeds in it of the different types of brightly coloured chard. The idea being you can sow them, you don't know what colours you're going to get, and you're going to get a mix of colours. So um, I just thought it would be fun because it will be nice, bright, 
coloured stems and green leaves in the garden in winter when it's a bit miserable. So that is the greenhouse as it stands at the moment. We're in that little bit just now where everything is kind of small seedling size, but over the next few weeks is when everything will change because I will be growing in here in temporary beds. Okay, same as I did last year. Um, I don't have ground, I don't have beds on the ground. I don't have earth here, it's a solid floor. But what I do is I put temporary raised bed ideas on the benches and I grow in them. And I mentioned that in the winter video, that if you have more soil, you will hold on to that heat longer. It won't cool down as quickly. So it's a great way for growing in winter. Large pots or beds work brilliantly. So stick with us to see all of the changes that are going to be coming over the next three or four weeks. It's, it's really about to kick off. So that was your quick turnaround video for this year then. We're going from summer into autumn and very quickly it will become winter but it doesn't mean we stop growing because we so grow eat repeat all year round see you guys